The experiences of one become the history of the next. The history of several become the traditions of a people. If we don't establish experiences in this generation where eldership, mentorship has the responsibility of refining and reproducing itself, the best of itself in the next generation, can you imagine the chaos that we leave our young people with? Can you imagine that being our legacy? Are we willing to take the leap? Are we willing to dig deeper into this question of what do we want our young people to be like? Really? Because in going down that road, we can't help but to turn the mirror around on ourselves and ask that second question, are we that? Are we willing to challenge our character? our motivations, our perspectives about the young people that we serve. If we plan to be effective at what we do, going back into our schools, going back into our communities, going back into our politics, we must dig deeper. Our young people are dying mentally and physically and it is a direct reflection of you and I. You here in Kansas and me in California. Taking the leap, what does that look like? Well, how many of you all consider yourselves community leaders? Raise your hands. Oh, please, I would expect the whole freaking uh, <laughs> auditorium to raise your hand. Well, that's part of the problem, <laughs> right there. <laughs> You are a community leader. Do you live in a home? Do you live in a community? Then you must see yourselves as a community leader. Ideas are the substance of behavior. There you are. You thank you very much. You all gave it to me. And sorry for my spraying you. <laughs> what you just did was went. You're a community leader. Anybody got a napkin to wipe this man? <laughs> You're, there you go. <laughs> a community leader. You're it. And I know it challenges us to step out there. But each of you knows how to love. Each of you knows what it means to care for someone deeply and strongly. Each of you knows how to approach someone respectfully with those spirits in mind. Again, the highest of expectations. Each of you can, if you so desire, transcend a results orientation in your mindset. I'll tell you what I mean by that. And get into a relationship oriented mindset. Understand that for the young people that you all are here working on behalf of, Relationship is the intervention. And the intervention is relationship. It's not rocket science, folks. Trust me. Relationship, relationship, relationship. A healthy start begins with a relationship. A caring adult is nothing without the willingness of that caring adult to provide ones with a relationship. A safe place is nothing without a relationship. Marketable skills are nothing if you can't develop relationships. Giving back in community service is empty without relationship. It's all about relationship. It's all about willing to take some chances. I live in a community where there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus my two, nine children in my court. Now, obviously, I mentor those young people because I am a community leader. <laughs> and I got my own Obama swagger. See, I'm going to tell you, no matter what you think about that, brother, you, you should learn how to walk like him. Because that cat walks with some confidence. He got some confidence. Now, you know, I know some people in there going, that's all he got. 
I know that being in Kansas. <laughs> we stay out of trouble. <laughs> I saw the boxing gloves go on. <laughs> but he's got confidence. A confidence that we all should have about who we are. You see, you've got to know that you're good seed. Because that's what you're planting, your seeds. Then you've got to see these young people as great ground to plant those seeds into. You know, most adults walk away from mentoring relationships premature, not because of what the young person didn't do on the adult's timeline. Most adults walk away because the young person didn't do it on the adult's timeline. And that adult then starts to question him or herself about should they do this or not? Because they're not getting through. They stop believing in themselves. Six out of ten adult mentors are care that are placed in caring adult relationships walk away of, from a year commitment within the first three months. Think of the message that sends to a kid who was put in a mentoring program because that kid had had that experience several times before in his own home. We've got to get beyond this Results-oriented mindset to a relationship-oriented mindset. What does that mean? In our own neighborhoods, we'll be called to the carpet. So I get up one morning, 7 o'clock, you know, and I may be putting a little mustard on it. It might have been later than that. <laughs> 7 o'clock in the morning, and I go to the gas station down the street from my home. Not less than, not more than a half a mile, if that, right? Quarter of a mile. My community, in essence. And I get out of my car. Now, I got to give you some, some pictures. There's a Dairy Queen right there. I'm at the pump. The Dairy Queen is right there. No fence. Just walk right to the Dairy Queen. I'm pumping my gas. And this big kid walks through the gas station lot. Now, now let me give you another picture. There was a dope pumping her gas in front of me and a few on the side of me and some over here. And that young man screams to a group of his friends at the Dairy Queen, leave that be. Everybody know what I'm saying? Talking to a young lady? Okay. Leave her alone. And you should have seen us adults. Us adults went. And some of us, like me, was like, let me hurry up. <laughs> I mean, get, it shouldn't take that long to fill up my tank. <laughs> I wanted to get to my job. This kid, big kid, and something in my mind, something in my mind, some of you are going to appreciate this remark more than others. I heard Richard Pryor. <laughs> and the question Rich asked me was, what you going to do? You out there talking all this smack, what you going to do? And my mind responded, I'm going to go to work. Because <laughs> I don't want to be late. I have to be responsible. And I kept hearing my spirit say, what you going to do, man? What you going to do? And my, it, it, it took a whole lot for me to transcend the nothingness that came up in my mind, nothing. You see how big that boy is? That's a big boy. <laughs> and I said some things in my head like, yeah, please. And I just jumped out there. I just jumped out there and I didn't know what I was going to say, so I pulled out a business card. I grabbed, I didn't grab him, I promise you I didn't grab him. <laughs> but I did pop up in front of him and said, hey brother, can I speak to you for a second? And the young man looked at me like I was crazy. And I want you to understand that was the first thing that comes when you decide, when you make a decision to do something, resistance. Because he looked at me and my mind said, I told you not to do it. I told you. I told you. I told you. And I said, hey, man, I, 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 no, no Barack Obama in me at that moment. Right? Where's the teleprompter at when you need it? 